So I just pull that. Yes. Wait until Unfasten I'm clear. The belts, Unfasten the seatbelts. Jump, jump out of the plane. Yes. Pull the big red Only handle. Only on the commando. Um, Only on, of course. Jump. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. That's it's uh, more or less. Good morning and welcome to the very sunny south of France. Um, we skipped one day of this vlog because we're just driving in a straight line for a thousand miles. That means that we have put 1,000 miles on the Vantage in 24 hours. We are now on our way to Cannes to jump in a Red Bull stunt plane. I know I've done some crazy things on this channel and I often say I can't believe the words that are coming out of my mouth but today is another one of those days. So let's hop in the new Vantage, drive into Cannes, and then get into a Red Bull stunt plane. <laughs> yes, that is the sound I've been listening to for a thousand miles. And it's getting better. It's getting better as this thing runs in. It's just learning the characteristics of this engine and what a phenomenal engine it is. Uh, anyway, we've got plenty of time to live with and talk about this car in the near future. But to be honest, I haven't actually had the brain capacity to take on board what I'm about to do. I've sort of known that it's been in my calendar and planned for a few weeks, but honestly, my schedule recently has been so busy that I'm literally waking up and taking every day as it comes and this morning I've woken up and realized that I am about to get in a stunt plane. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have watched any uh, Red Bull air race content um, but these guys are pulling up to 11 G. Whether or not they're going to be doing that with me today I'm not sure because that sounds like the kind of figure that would snap your neck. I mean I didn't think it would get more sort of nerve-wracking and scary than when I drove the F1 car, but this is up there, and it's only just started to descend on me that I'm now driving to an airport to get in one of those planes. Let's do that fancy cut where I like go in like this and come out like this. Boom! What do we reckon? Top flight, some Top Gun action right now. The funny thing is, it kind of feels just like a race suit that I would wear in a racing car, only I'm gonna have a very different experience shortly. So uh, the fun it's weird because we're actually running a little bit late. This has just been right, come in here, sign this, wear this, do this, you're going out in the plane. So let's not hang around, let's do this. These are a bit different than the ones in my bathroom. Look how yeah, hardcore these are. Oh! That is heavy duty right there. Okay. That looks more like it's for weighing boxes, not humans, you know? It's like, put some crates on it. No, but this is really What are you trying like... to say, guys? <laughs> this is really, really like... Super accurate. You can get in. Okay. Yeah. What? I already... Uh, <laughs> What's it saying? 84. Did you hear that? <laughs> it's nothing. It's nothing. I'm a lightweight Someone... racing snake. <laughs> we, need, we need some more muscle. I know, right? <laughs> it's all about power to weight ratio in my world, you know what I mean? Yes, I know. <laughs> trying to say I'm skinny. <laughs> Look at the ceiling, it's all beautiful beech wood. It's very posh. It's like, a, it's, what's weird is I'm drawing similar parallels to when I'm in the, the pit garage with cars. Only everything's on a much grander scale. And weirdly, it's much quieter. Normally, in a pit lane, you'd be like saying, what? I can't hear you. Because all of the cars would be starting up. But of course, there's no airplanes immediately around us. Um, speaking of which, I think the plane, I read that it's around 315 horsepower, which is interesting because from my world, from the car world, 315 horsepower doesn't sound that much. But if you can see what these things are capable of with 315 horsepower, the agility looks ridiculous. I'm not entirely sure of the weight of the plane. I can't imagine it's that heavy, but again, similarities with power to weight, I assume these things are like, I don't know, 600 kilograms or something like that. And uh, how not to ruin my lovely flight suit with uh, what I had for breakfast this morning. All 
Right, so we've now crossed the red line, which means we're sort of in, or we're airside, as it were. Uh, I am approaching a Red Bull Air Race plane, which is, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't really know how to put it in, into words, but listen, I'm, I'm used to getting into some pretty spicy stuff, but this is, uh, this is a totally different ball game. Hey, how are you? Hello, nice to meet Good you. Good to meet you. Uh -huh. What can I expect from this? <laughs> I mean, we will have some fun. I yeah, mean, we absolutely. Will depart here, uh, yeah. In Cannes. We will start with some uh, basic aerobatics, right? Okay. Like uh, looping rolls and a combination of it, or like the vertical turning maneuver that okay. the guys are doing in the race. <laughs> okay, cool. And I mean, if yeah. you feel good and it's uh, all nice, we okay. can do some more stuff. Yes. Did okay. you do aerobatics before? No, no, and, never. Uh, you flew never. in a smaller I've, planes. I've, when I was younger, I had yeah. some experience f uh, flying. Gliders? gliders. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's good. But it, it's good, but it's like, you know, it's powered by thermals, isn't it? It's very, yeah, <laughs> it's but, very uh, steady. It's, it's good to have it. I mean, yeah, we started okay, on gliders sure. as well. Okay, cool. Um, uh, it's from about 600 kilogram and... Uh, 600. More so than 600. Uh, 300 uh, horsepower. Yeah. horsepower. Yes. So it, it's good. It's powerful. Let's do it, man. Yes. Do it. Okay, cool. Of course. It's always mildly disconcerting when you have to put a parachute on before you get into a plane. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks so cool. So just in case we have, for example, a uh, uh, engine failure very uh -huh. high, uh, I will drop the canopy mm -hmm. and then the commando is uh, jump, jump, jump. Sure. Then okay. the only thing you have to do is uh, to unfasten the seatbelts. Yep. Romulo, the technician, he will show you how it uh, is done. Okay. okay. That's so I just pull that. Remember. Yes. Wait until unfasten I'm clear. The belts, unfasten the seatbelts. Jump, jump, jump out of the plane. Yes. Pull the big red only handle. Only on the commando. Um, oh, no, no, of course. Jump. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. That's it's uh, more or less. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Up a little bit. So it's quite similar to being in a race car, really. We have harnesses. Which are effectively like sorry, four point harnesses, and it's really tight. <laughs> I'm being ratcheted in. Mad. Okay. okay. That's cool though. Okay. That looks way cooler now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tucked into my uh, left sleeve is my sick bag, just in case. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> is crazy <laughs> wow i'm just totally upside down here this is mad oh my good god i have never experienced anything like this oh wow okay now look to your left you see the horizon on your left side god we're just falling out of the sky the sky is my floor i have never experienced anything like this okay cool okay hold on Wow, wow. We're going through the air race. Inflatables. 
Ah, the accuracy. Wow, that is cool. <laughs> Wow. I'm still trying to uh, get my head around that. I'm <laughs> right. I don't know where to begin with that experience. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that was honestly that was absolutely incredible. Cool, absolutely nice. incredible. Wow, I've only I've never experienced anything like it. Really, never experienced anything like that. That was nice. just out of this world. <laughs> what was the, the the move when we were going up towards the sky for a while? We were just yes, sky, sky, sky. We were uh, going up uh, yeah. straight, just straight like vertical. Uh, yes, and then we did uh, it's so called hammerhead. And we we turn on the on the on one spot. Yeah. Turn right then, down. Yes, and then we go in like. Uh, so that's called the hammerhead. Yes. I've got to find some footage of the hammerhead because that just scrambled like it was just like up, 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 and then oh, there's the floor. Wow. Dude, honestly, thank you so much for that. That was unbelievable. <laughs> Didn't need the sick bag either. I, although I have to say, if he kept on going for much longer, maybe I would. Oh, I don't know. I've never, I, I just lost for words. The experience of just the world upside down is, is, is one thing. We're in a beautiful sunny day. We've got can as our backdrop. Further on beyond that, we have the snow-capped Alps. And at the same time, you're with this incredible pilot, the Hammerhead. Just straight up, straight up, straight up, and you're just looking at this blue void for a while, and then all of a sudden, your whole body goes hollow and light, and you just like crash towards the floor. The response of it as well, what I could see was the stick moving. So with this being a two-seater plane, um, the sort of passenger controls are also in front of me, and I could see the actual control stick moving. The the tiniest amount of movement to make that plane do like insane things. It was like hyper responsive. Um, just being in something so small and so agile. Felt like I was like, you know, honey, I shrunk the kids. <laughs> I, I feel like they've shrunk me down and stuck me on the back of like a wasp or something. It was just mental. The agility of it all. Um, and that weightlessness that sometimes you're basically free falling and your whole body just goes hollow and light and you're just like flying towards the floor thinking what's coming next because you've got no idea he sort of speaks to you in your ear and prepares you for well as much as you can possibly be prepared uh, but it's so loud in there you can kind of only hear it a bit um, and all of a sudden like one minute you're looking at the horizon next minute you're upside down and backwards and yeah I'm gonna uh, debrief uh, let the adrenaline deplete from my body because I'm slightly uh, shaky and uh, that's the thing I'm most proud of though. No sick bag. Talk to you in a minute. <laughs> James, you well? How are you? Well, I'm very good. Yes. Obviously, have you just been I've or just, just been out. I've just been out. How was it? It was, well, I want to pick your brains on how you, you train for levels of G up to like 11 because I think we pulled about five and that was enough. That you felt know, like that enough. Was enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so everything yeah. under 5G weighs five times more than it should do. So your head, uh, yeah. your arms, yeah. that's why, you know, it's the same as being on a roller coaster. Yeah. You can't put your arms out in front of you and you, you just can't keep them up because yeah, yeah. everything is five times heavier. Sure. Um, and we have the same thing, but obviously to a slightly higher level. So <laughs> when we're snapping anything up to 12G in this aeroplane, it's, yeah, it's a lot. Oh, gee. How do you train for that? Uh, it's, it's, well, a lot of the guys here are aerobatic pilots in their own right, so they're used to putting a lot of G. Yeah. Um, but you know, the only way to train for it is just to go out and do it. Do it. Need to be repeated, really? need to, yeah. It's one of those, um, obviously a lot of physical fitness helps to sure. keep yourself in shape to be able to cope with it, but yeah. it's, it's one of those what we call perishable skills. So if you've not been out and pulled a lot of G for okay. a week or two weeks, then your tolerance to it will be really? a lot longer. Yeah. And yeah, Jarrah said, weeks. Yeah, yeah. Wow. so yeah, you, you have to, certainly before a race, you know, yeah. do, do some flights back at home, yeah. just building your G tolerance yeah. up so your body gets used to it. Um, wow. but, uh, yeah, because it needs to be instinctive, you know, you're concentrating on flying over race lane, flying the track, so that, that needs to be uh, instinctive. But yeah, it's hard work, as you've just done. Uh, Absolutely, you've just yeah. Out. Well, yeah. I was only out there for 50 <laughs> minutes or something, but yeah. it started to affect me when my eyes started going a bit black. Was that the compression or? No, well, all no? that was is, yeah. um, so if you think about where you're standing now yes. and you're breathing air, uh -huh. uh, so your body and your lungs are taking oxygen in, feeding yeah. oxygen to your blood, which is uh -huh. then feeding to your brain. When, when you're under that G, yes. 
five times G is pulling all of that blood yeah. away from your head down into your down into your feet. Yes. So what you're okay. what you're experiencing with that sort of slight loss of vision yes. is basically your brain getting starved of oxygen. Of oxygen. So, right. um, which is why for us in the air race, and if you do this sort of day to day, it's, yeah. it's not just about straining against that G, but you've also got to make sure whilst you're straight you're breathing to, to get the oxygen going back up into your brain. Because without it, yeah. Yeah, the next stage of what you experience is out. it goes completely black <laughs> and then that's yeah, not you what you want when you're flying. Not what you want when you go flying. Right? Well I've always had ultimate respect for it, but after feeling it first hand, do yeah. well, you guys are next level. You guys are next level. Glad, so. glad you enjoyed well, it. No, fabulous. Enjoy the race. Good luck. Thank Cheers you. mate, thank you. Unreal. Yeah, I just think this is the kind of thing that you don't hear about through the TV screen. You know, hearing it firsthand from these guys, I hope it gives you an appreciation for just how hardcore it is. As I mentioned, I've felt a very small amount of it and uh, yeah, blew my mind. Ultimate respect. Highly cool.